Here in the United Kingdom, the conflict between Israel and Palestine reverberates intensely as a week of street protests and rancorous debate has demonstrated. One good-tempered dispute concerns the decision by the BBC not to refer to Hamas as terrorists. Five eminent KCs have written to the broadcaster, accusing it of violating its own editorial charter. I'm joined by one of them, Lord Wolfson. David. Um, David, w w what is your point? Is it that the BBC has a wrong policy or that it has applied the policy inconsistently in a way that particularly disfavours Israel? It's the inconsistency point. Um, uh, Roger Mosey, the previous head of BBC Television News, wrote an article in The Guardian back in 2005 after the 7-7 bombings in London. And he explained that the BBC has no problem using the word terrorist. It just has to use it when it's appropriate to do so. And our essential point is this. The BBC uses and used that word, for example, about the 7-7 bombing. It used it about the massacre of innocents in a Paris nightclub but all of a sudden seems to have a problem uh, using it about this massacre of, of, of which we've just heard. So it's the inconsistent treatment which is at the heart of our complaint. I've, I, I've read your letter and I'm slightly surprised because, for instance, you mentioned that um, the, the people involved in Manchester were called terrorists, but in your letter what you actually cite is terror attack survivors con condemn compensation body. 17th of July 2023. So actually the word terrorist doesn't um, appear there. And also you have a reference to the BBC calling Al-Qaeda and IRA terrorist groups. But your reference is a thing called BBC Bite Size Guide for GCSE students. These look like kind of instances which may have been people not understanding the BBC's own policy. Are you saying that broadly speaking, day after day, the 9-11 attackers, the 7-7 attackers, and that the IRA were called terrorists, because people's recollections of this seem to be quite confused. Well, if you go back to the 7-7 bombings, for example, the BBC editorially has called those people terrorists. Uh, and I accept the BBC has a difficult job. I'm not a BBC basher. I support the BBC. I like the fact, if I can say it on this channel, that we also have a national broadcaster. What I do ask for is consistency and explanation. In this case as well, the BBC has to recognise that not just, it's not just that what happened on Saturday, it seems to me, was the paradigm of terrorism, but also Hamas is a designated, prescribed terrorist group as a matter of law in this country. Now, again, I'm not saying that whatever the government says, the BBC has to follow, but we are at a, an odd situation where lots of broadcasters, including this channel, have no problem calling Hamas a terrorist organisation. The law of England and Wales calls Hamas a terrorist organisation. The BBC has used that word in other contexts, but refused to use it here. To use it here. What I think the BBC has to do is to think again about its own policies. And I appreciate that might be difficult while the war is going on. But afterwards, I think there has to be some real thought at the BBC as to how it's going to deal with this issue going forward. Have you tested yourself on this? Because I've been, I've been testing myself. So, you know, if, if the Ukrainians fire a rocket into an apartment block in Moscow, I would certainly not call that terrorism. Of course, the Russians would. Um, Lawrence of Arabia blowing up trains and bridges, I would not call it terrorism. Of course, the Ottoman Empire certainly would. Um, I called what the IRA... Uh, did terrorism, but of course many people in Ireland and indeed many people in the United Kingdom did not. Um, you see what I'm getting at, that um, the, the word terrorist is, is used by different people in different contexts, or, or rather we choose, we each choose what we're going to describe as terrorism. Well, I can accept that there may be some instances where people will use the word terrorism for political purposes. But equally, there are instances where that is, in my view, the only word which adequately describes what happened. And when you read the accounts of what happened on Saturday, which was a deliberate attack to murder people, some toddlers were shot and their grandmothers were taken hostage. Sometimes it was the other way around. They... Uh, took the toddlers hostage and shot the grandmothers. That is terrorism by anybody's definition, and we should have no problem calling it out. If we don't, we lose moral clarity. And that's what I'm also concerned about. As a society, we need to have moral clarity about what happened on Saturday, not least because for those of us, and I'm one of them, 
who support the concept of a Palestinian state, who support a two-state solution. The only way to get to a two-state solution is to recognise that groups like Hamas have got no part in a future Middle East, because it's Hamas which prevents work towards a two-state solution and not advances it. What about this idea? The BBC is a 100-year-old organisation which was founded with some extraordinarily important and impressive guiding principles. And one of those was that it would not be emotional, that it would not be sentimental, that it would not be hysterical. And it sustained that position even through the Second World War. Uh, people would not run around the studio. They would refer to the enemy, but they wouldn't start, uh, you know, editorialising. And although you've found some examples of inconsistency over that 100-year history, it's trying to do something which it regards as quite important, which is, as I, as I say, to, to remain calm... To, to address every issue with proper journalistic standards. Do you have any sympathy for that explanation? I have every sympathy with the uh, objective, uh, but I, I don't think it explains what the BBC's actually been doing on the ground, so to speak. Um, absolutely, hysteria has no place in a newsroom. Um, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a proper emotion to have in a newsroom. But what a newsroom has to do is actually report what's happened. And... In, the view of, in my view, and those of us who wrote the letter, and I think many others, what happened on Saturday was terrorism. It was terrorism carried out by a group which in this country is designated as a prescribed terrorist organisation. And it's not hysteria to call that out. It's simply calling things what they are. And I hope that it may be difficult, as, as I say, for the BBC to change its policy, so to speak, or change its approach mid-war. But at some point, the BBC is going to have to think about how it handles, handles this going forward because the refusal of the BBC to call Hamas terrorists has caused deep consternation, not only in the Jewish community, but way beyond it.